This is unit 8, lesson 1. In this unit, which will be a short unit, we'll talk about two types of formulas, something called the empirical and then something called the molecular formula. Each compound can be said to have both an empirical and a molecular formula. This will uh, require us to review some things from the previous semester, uh, and really it's the molar mass idea. If you remember, we talked about the molar mass of something, and that is simply the mass that you would have if you had one mole of a substance. And this number is given to you below the element on the periodic table. Now remember, 35.45 is how many grams chlorine weighs if you have one mole of chlorine. Now if you have one mole of chlorine, you have this many atoms of chlorine, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if you have this collection of atoms, which is a humongous number of atoms, it will weigh 35.45 grams. You can also do the same thing for compounds, and we did this for compounds. So if you have magnesium chloride and you wanted to know the molar mass of it, you would simply add a magnesium and two chlorines together to get a total mass of 95.21 grams. And oftentimes the units are actually grams per mole. You'll see this per mole at the bottom just signifying that you have a, a mole of the compound. Now we'll use these numbers from the periodic table in the molecular and empirical formulas in this chapter. So the first thing we'll talk about is something called percent composition. Now you should be aware of how percents work. Percent, if you want to know the percent of anything, percent means part over, so the percent say of uh, girls in our class would be the number of girls divided by the total number of students and then you multiply that by a hundred. This is always the formula for percent. It's the general version of it is part divided by whole times 100. This is how percents are determined. So we can take a look at a compound. In this case we have sodium nitrate and we can divide it into its percents. We can ask what's the percent of sodium, what's the percent of nitrogen, what's the percent of oxygen. And here they are, it's 27% sodium, 16.5% nitrogen, and 56.5% oxygen. Now these are percentages by mass. So we're not talking about how many atoms we have in the compound, we're talking about how much mass is made up of this whole compound. So for example, if you wanted to pull all the sodium out of this compound, chemically, if you want to just pull all the sodium out, you'll get about a quarter of it is sodium, which is still a good amount. Um, and this is what these numbers mean. Now, the formula for percent then, in our case, or for percent composition, is you take the mass of your element, which is the number on top, and then you put the total mass of the whole compound on the bottom, and you multiply this by 100. Now, the mass of the element, if you have, for example, H2O, and you have to get the mass of hydrogen, you have to actually get two hydrogens. So the mass of element, all the element, and you'll see this in an example that we're about to do. So let's go ahead and do an example. And our example says, find the percent composition of oxygen in lead for oxide, PbI2. Remember that uh, we need these, this Roman numeral for compounds that have more than one possible charge. And even though lead is not from the D block, Lead, however, can have two possible charges, a plus 2 and a plus 4. In this case, it's plus 4. That's why we're ha we have this uh, number in the, in the name. We learned how, the, how to name in the previous chapter. Now let's solve this problem. The percent composition of oxygen. So our percent formula says we want the mass of oxygen. Then we want the mass of the whole thing, the total mass, which means PbO2. And then we want to multiply that by 100. Now, since we have two oxygens in the formula, we're actually going to do the mass of O2, since you want the mass of the whole element, is the idea. Okay, let's go for it. So our percent will be each oxygen weighs 16.00 grams, so we'll do that twice. And then the total mass is going to be lead plus the two oxygens. Now, if you take a look at lead in the periodic table, it's pretty heavy. At lead is... 207.2, so we got 207.2 grams, plus 16, plus 16, and let's see if we can calculate this. On top we should get 
0.00 and on the bottom we should get do this calculation 239.2 now we'll multiply this by 100 and put this in your calculator and tell me what you get do you get 13 point three eight percent this should be our answer thirteen point three eight percent that should be a point now what this tells us is that this is the percent of oxygen remember oxygen is actually a small percentage of this compound but if you take a look at the formula itself it looks like you have a lot of oxygen in it notice it looks like you have twice as much oxygen in the formula as you have lead but having calculated this, this is not the case because lead is so much more heavy than oxygen. So if you wanted to pull out oxygen from this compound, you'll only get maybe one seventh, one eighth of oxygen. The rest of it is lead. So most of this compound is in fact lead. Okay, go ahead and uh, try one of these on your own and then we'll come back in the next small lesson and do some problems, uh, some similar problems. So try to find the percent composition of nitrogen in dinitrogen tetroxide. This will conclude for us the first lesson, which was short and sweet.